When you lit that stolen love is dry And life to choke to death When you were wasted In Carter's Creek And Pastor John Ducked you down in the water And raised you up for air Even though we're small in 
Father, we know you're with us the whole time and just blessing us today. And just get with the ones who are unable to be here today, whether they're physically ill or just spiritually sick, just transfer mind and body and soul so they can realize we need to serve you every day because we have eternal life with you. Just forgive our sins in Jesus Christ and we pray. Amen. Amen. We are uh, low in number this morning, but uh, the Lord is here. I told them in Sunday school that uh, when the Lord is with us, we always have a majority, so uh, we just thank the Lord for it. Uh, before we get into the announcement, I want to read a little thing to you. It's, it's uh, a letter to a child at Christmas. And it says, uh, how many stars are there in the universe? Do you know? Actually, no one is quite sure, but there are about 10 billion galaxies and about 100 billion stars in a galaxy. So that means that there are uh, somewhere about 1 billion trillion stars out there somewhere. Uh and those are just the ones we know about. And do are being born every day. Uh, we are like teeny tiny specks in a gigantic universe. At night when we look up at the sky and you see the stars, do you ever feel small? Uh, too small for God to notice or to care about? When God looks down, does He even see us? But did you know that before God even made the stars or anything in the universe, He knew your name and the color of your eyes? The Bible says that God sang and danced for joy as He made you and me. That if you had tried to count how many times He thinks about you, it would be like trying to count all the grains of sand on the seashore. That He knows every day you'll ever live. He hears every whisper hidden in your heart. And He holds every tear you've ever cried. Because He just can't stop loving you. He would move heaven and earth to be near you. And one night, long ago, in Bethlehem, he did just that. Because you see, God doesn't just look down. He came down. God Himself came down. How did He come? With trumpets and flags and big armies. No. He came in the quiet when no one was looking in the dead of night. Well, where did He go? to the important people, to a palace or, or a castle. No. He came to a poor, homeless couple in a tumble-down state on the outskirts of a nothing town. Shh! Do you see the little baby sleeping in, in his mother's arms? He is God Almighty the maker of the stars. Mary and Joseph named Him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Because, of course, He had the King of Heaven, the great Creator of the universe, the maker of the stars, and all the galaxies had made himself small and come down as a tiny little baby. Why did he leave his palace and his throne and step out of heaven and come down? For just one reason. So that he could be with you. And why? 
because he just can't stop loving you. Now when we stop and think about Christmas in that type of, of a scenario, man, it ought to bring joy to our heart. In our bulletin, you know, uh, the church had its candlelight service last Sunday night. And I hope that all that attended had a, a wonderful time in the Lord as, as we prepared for the coming of Christmas and the birth of the Lord Jesus. And then, if that wasn't enough, then came Christmas. And I hope that each and every one had a very blessed Christmas. And may the grace of the Lord continue to shine upon us all. Because there is hope for the new year. A hope that everyone will be looking forward to, to saying goodbye to 2020. And will welcome 2021 with the anticipation of what only the Lord can perform it. See, we talked about anticipation in Sunday school this morning. And that anticipation was only something that the Lord could have done. And that same anticipation is with us today. As we look into 2021, anticipating what only God can do in 2021. Well, the back of the bulletin, there, there's always uh, something, and, and it's just some thoughts about why I like Christmas. So I hope you'll, you'll read it. Maybe it'll cause, uh, maybe you'll find some familiar ground there to the reasons that you like Christmas. As well, uh, hoping uh, and pray that once again that everyone had a, a very merry Christmas and looking toward a better and a hopeful New Year coming later this week. Forever and ever, 
Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. All right. Now let's turn to page 162. To God be the glory. Sing all three verses, page 162. Let's all stand, please, for the offering. <coughs> to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So love he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin.
attentive to our hearts and to our ears, and Father, that you would lay on Brother Wayne's heart. And Father, you bring us close to you. Father, I just pray for all that you do for us, for us, Father, so much in favor of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
open our hearts and our minds to be receptive to your word today. Lord, let us forever be changed by it as we march our way into the year 2021. Lord, may this be the, the message that you would have us to end 2020 with. It's with that that each and every one standing said, Amen. We can't be seated this morning. You know, we look that we have to realize the source of all gifts. Now, there are gifts that we get each year at Christmas time. And uh, if it wasn't for the name tag attached on that present, we wouldn't know where it come from. We wouldn't know who got it for us. And no one, if we didn't, if we wouldn't have put a name tag on there, we wouldn't know who to give it to. So we look to the source of our gift. The very first gift that's mentioned there in the verse uh, 17 is the gift that comes from the Greek word of dosis, which is literally meaning an act of giving. It, it, it tells us there in 17, it says every good gift. So it is a description of the gift. So it, it involves uh, the act of giving. Okay? That second word gift found in verse 17 comes from the word of dorema, which refers to an actual gift from someone. It is something that has been given. Okay? With that frame of mind. Both the act of giving and the gift are good. And we learn according to uh, this verse that they come from the Lord. Uh, it's vital that we understand this morning and every day that our gifts, our blessings, come from the Lord. They don't come from any other place. They don't come from us to someone. Because even a blessing that we're able to bless somebody else with was given to us by God to be able to do it with. We look that uh, every, uh, every gift and, and our blessings, they, they do come from the Lord. You know, giving to others is a wonderful blessing. It, it's something that, that we're able to do, afforded to us by the example, excuse me, that God gave to us. Because you see, on Christmas, we, we get the giver. Giving you and I the perfect gift of the Lord Jesus. And in turn, we have to, to realize that uh, giving to others is a wonderful blessing. And uh, not only for those who are in need, but also for the giver. You know, there are times when our heart needs that. It needs us to be a cheerful giver, to, to be a, a blessing, a giver of blessing to others. Because giving brings joy. I mean, 
God deals extensively with the topic of giving. The very topic of giving is covered in about four and a half percent of the verses of the Bible. So when you know we look, God places a pretty pretty good emphasis on giving. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not sitting up here. This isn't a, 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 a sermon to end out 2020 on about tithing or anything. Even though that is what God would have us to do, but. It, we're talking about being a blessing with the giving that we are able to do. We're able to give to others. I mean, we come into Christmas and, uh, you know, I, I believe I said it back in, in Sunday school this morning that we, we all look to what is underneath the tree. You know, or whatever the case may be. And, and we look with anticipation, you know, of someone handing us a gift to open. First Peter, we, we, we saw this morning of the Old Testament prophets and how they looked with anticipation of the gift. You know, God wants us. He doesn't want us to be selfish or greedy. But He wants us to be generous with others. I mean, after all, you know, we look uh, at the very generosity of God as He gave us His Son Jesus. We look to the generosity of God as we look to each and every blessing that He blesses us with. We must look and realize that we need not be selfish. We need not be greedy. But we need to be as God is and be generous with us. Just as as you were this Christmas. I mean I mean when we look at the things that we did as a small church small in number anyway at this point in time we can notice by looking around us this morning that we can realize that we were able to bless a lot of people this Christmas by the things that we did. I mean, if you would have been, if you had been able to hear in the voice and see in the heart of the administration of the nursing home as we took those gifts to the residents there, you would have seen a little bit of what I'm talking about. But I do believe as many years as we've been going that this was the most receptive of our blessings. that we take there was this year. Uh, you know, we look and yet this being selfish or greedy, it can't happen. When the giving is for one when it's not sincere. You know, uh, when a person gives 
with the wrong motive, they're not very sincere about what they're doing. And people know it. They can tell it. When the giving is, is not sensible, I mean, gifts that corrupt or, or spoil a person's character are supposed to be a substitute for the giver's fellowship, they're not a sensible gift to be given to people. And lastly, when the giving is not suitable, I mean, Lord knows that you don't turn around and give a little kid uh, a razor or you you give a, a radio to a deaf person. I mean, you know, it, it literally is not a, a suitable gift. But I want you to realize something. That when God gives to us, He does He does it with not to do it to get something back from us. But He gives because He loves us. That little story I read uh, in the announcements, you know, it, it talks about a, a letter to a child dealing about Christmas. Why? Did Christ come the way He came? Because God loves us. Why would, would He provide here in, in James chapter 1 and verse 17? Uh, and why would it, it, it begin with every good gift and every perfect gift comes from, uh, from above? And, and it cometh down from the Father of lights because it is God and it's only Him that can provide them. Because I'm telling you today, think about it. If someone were to give you a, uh, a brand new car for Christmas, right? Well, chances are that out there someplace, is a better car than what you got. You look out there and no matter uh, what position you may hold in a company or, or whether or not, you know, the job that you have or something like that, you can pretty much guarantee there's somebody with a better and a better paying job than what you got. But hear me this morning that there is no better gift. There is no better gift out there than what God gave to you and I yeah. at Christmas yeah. when He gave us His Son Jesus. Yeah. It's a perfect gift. Yeah. I mean, we look. Now, it may be good the gifts we got, they may be good, but they're not perfect. Yeah. You know, if you looked at, if you got a stench of clothes for Christmas, you know, if you got a pair of socks for Christmas, I, I would venture to say that you could probably look on that pair of socks and, boy, if you really spread those uh, little seams or stitches or whatever it is, that you would probably find that there are some, there may be a messed up stitch or two on that thing. They're not perfect. Anything that man does create or has a part in is not perfect. But everything that God has a part in is perfect. The gift that He gave And it was perfect for you and me.
You know, we can have security and peace in the Lord because He is consistent. He is stable. And He's trustworthy. He is the, the only one that we can depend on. What God says, He's going to do. Right. G, uh, James said that our gifts come down from the Father of lies. That's the only place where perfect gift can come from. It's from a perfect entity, God. If He is the one that we can depend on, then there is only one kind of perfect gift. And it is the kind of gift that is free. It is the, it is the kind that is insured. It is the kind that comes with a basically a service contract with it. There are three gifts that God has purchased at a great price. Now, Matthew talks a little bit about this in Matthew chapter 13. And in verses 44 and 45, uh, he talks a little bit about uh, the, uh, the purchase. And he says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Again, verse 45 says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. You know, when, when we look and we think about the price of God's gift to you and me, it is beyond comprehension. There is not a price tag that you and I can place upon it. And when we talk about three gifts that God purchased for us, then, then we have to realize that all three are for the benefit of the believer. They're for our benefit. They're for our joy this morning. First, gift number one is our salvation. We look at John in chapter number four. Uh, in verses five and through ten, it says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy me. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him he would have given the living water. So we look 
And, and we think, you know, uh, a gift is not a perfect gift unless it's free. Now, Jesus, He didn't tell the woman at the well that she had to do anything to get the, this water of everlasting life. All she had to do was ask for it. You know, salvation is in every aspect. It is a work of God on behalf of man. And it is no sense a, a work of man on behalf of God. When God gave us Jesus Christ that blessed very first Christmas morning, we find that it was a free gift. The Bible tells us there in Luke 2, as the angel uh, spoke unto the shepherds, you know, he, he said that unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior. Boy, you know, we look and we realize that salvation, the very gift of salvation is of the Lord. You can't work for it or buy it. It's already been bought. And it's already been paid for. God purchased it for you and I. God purchased this gift of salvation by giving us the Son. John 3, verse 16. For God gave. Didn't mention anything about saying He asked for anything in return. He said, He gave. And you and I, we only have two choices. We can either receive salvation as a gift, a free gift, or we can reject it. Period. There's only two choices that we have. Not only uh, do we have the gift of, of our salvation? But we have the security of our salvation. Back in John, in chapter number 10. John tells us in verses 27 through 31, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. You know, we... We have to realize here today the very security of our salvation. You know, a, a gift is not a perfect gift unless it's insured. Okay? God purchased the security of our salvation by giving us His Holy Spirit. We find that we are insured of our salvation by the giving and the receiving of the Holy Spirit of God. Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, 
verse 13 and 14 says, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed or secured with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Now, we are given this security of our salvation. You know, the very third person of the triune Godhead is God's guarantee to you and me that He will give us everything that He has promised to us. By the giving of that Holy Spirit, God is saying, I'm guaranteeing everything that I have said. Everything that I, 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 I proclaimed unto you is going to come true. Jesus talked about there in John in, in uh, chapter 16, chapter 17, He talks about that He had to go in order for the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to come. And it is that, that Comforter that will remind us of everything that He has said. Now, if He said it, God said it. Because he, he, what He's saying in chapter 10 in, in the book of John, I and my Father are what? One. One of the same. So when we, when we guarantee it that what God has said, He's going to do. We can be secured of that fact this morning. By the giving of Jesus at Christmas, we can guarantee that our redemption is going to be bought not as the present underneath the tree, but the present hanging on the tree at Calvary for you and me. The Spirit of God is like in the real estate world and earnest money. It is the down payment guaranteeing us eternal security in God. And just as God purchased the gift of salvation by giving us His Son, so He purchased the security of our salvation by giving us His Spirit. I don't see us in there anyway. We make a big deal about Christmas, about it being us. But I'm telling you this morning, Christmas is not about us, it's about Him. And what He did is the gifts that He gave. Third, we find the third gift that God purchased. And that is the servicing of our salvation. Look back in to Ephesians in chapter number 4. Talks a little bit about the servicing of our salvation. Verses 7 through 13 it says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. 
Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, there is a servicing that we find there in those verses. And we find this servicing. You know, a gift is not a perfect gift unless it's serviced. If God spared not His Son in order to purchase the gift of our salvation, and spare not His Spirit in order to secure the gift of our salvation. Why would He spare His uh, services to whom He has called to serve our salvation? You know, who has it benefited from the very books of God's men like Job, and Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the epistles of Paul, of uh, uh, First and Second Peter, uh, uh, James, and and the like. They're a benefit unto us, okay? Because they service this salvation that. God has afforded unto us. A gift can be purchased. And it can be uh, insured. But if it is not serviced, it will fail to keep its original value. You buy a car today. And I'm telling you, if you buy an extended warranty on that car, when you buy it, if you don't do the recommended servicing things pertaining to that car, at the mileages in which they say you got a record of it, chances are if something happens, they ain't going to cut it. Because they're going to say, well, you didn't get it served. You didn't do your part. And it won't keep its value. God's desire for the ones whom He has uh, salvaged is to preserve them and present them unto Himself blameless and unblemished. That's what God desires for you and me. After all, we were just a salvageable item. A salvageable part of the creation that God can salvage. He can, can turn and can, can restore us. Just to purchase a gift 
that's free. To purchase a gift that is insured. To purchase a gift that is serviced. He has no problem. And, and you know, there are a lot of things. As an individual, as a man, as a husband, as a uh, and those things, that I wish that I could have been able to acquire for my wife for Christmas. But I couldn't. Because, I mean, i got limitations, you know. But I'll give you this morning, folks. We're dealing with one that has no problem spending everything he has for you and me. He spent his love and his grace and his mercy. He spent his son. He spent his Holy Spirit to purchase for us greatest gift, the perfect gift. And in and through this I will say that we can't be serviced. A car can't be serviced unless you take it to get it serviced, right? I mean, you can't sit up here and say, well, it's time for my oil change. Hmm. If you don't take it and get the oil changed in, I mean, you know, just you thinking about it is not going to get it done. The same as it is for God. God had no problem purchasing that perfect gift for you and I. And he has no problem in securing it. And he has no problem in servicing it. But folks, if God's people aren't in church like they should be, like they can be and like they could be, then how can God service what He has purchased for you and me? God does not change like shifting shadows. God is set in His ways. You ever met somebody that was just set in their ways? You ain't going to change them. You're not going to change how they look, how they react, and what they say, what they believe, or whatever. They're set in Period. God is just like that. You're not going to change them. But he is in the life-changing business. And he's still changing lives today. He's still saving folks today. He is still uh, securing folks today. And if people will allow him to do it, he is still servicing that salvation He is eternally immutable. He is unchangeable. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 13 through the very first part of 19 says, For when God made promises to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, 
and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us, which hope we have as an anchor for the soul both sure and steadfast. talk about a perfect gift? Perfect gift has been laid out for us. For you and I. Our gift is hope. Or, or, or our gift of hope is sure and steadfast. We sit here and 2020 wasn't the, wasn't the greatest year that we've ever had. But by the grace of God, He still provided His salvation. And He ensured it. He secured it with that of the Holy Spirit. And He now ensures it to the servicing of that salvation. So, you know, if we, if, we, if, we, if we turn around and we think, well, well, what happened in 2020 that was worth anything? Well, let me tell you. He gave us a gift. Good and perfect. So in 2021, may He be the gift of hope that you and I can look to and realize that He is sure and steadfast. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father Given, available by God. For our benefit. So if you're contemplating on what 2020 had that was good that you could think back on, think back on that. Because it is that hope that will take us into 2021. Let's all stand. Dear Lord, we do come thanking You, Lord, for Your many blessings. Lord, we look back and, and we see the struggles and the chaos and the confusion and all of those things of 2020. And yet, Lord, we have to realize one thing, that all that is in hindsight, hindsight, compared to the good and the perfect gift of Jesus that You gave to us at Christmas. Lord, I pray that You help us, Lord, to look to 2021, Lord, not with the thinking of, well, it's just going to be another 2020, but Lord, that we can look at it knowing that our hope is secure and it's steadfast because we can look to You knowing that every good and perfect 
gift is from you. Lord, use this invitation as only you can. Page 281. Ask me not a gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Savior today. For He hears our cries. He hears our prayers. He hears our needs. Do not pass me by. Well, I hope that you'll, uh, as we close out this morning's service, that um, you think about and and be back in the Lord's house this evening as we continue in the book of Hosea. Uh, you know, look look forward to what God has in store for us for 2021. Let's pray and we can be dismissed this morning. Dear Lord, we do come thanking You, Lord, for the very... Uh, Lord, just the very essence of You today. Lord, that uh, You place that emphasis upon our hearts to, to come and to be here today. and Lord, just to be able to, uh, to lift up Your holy name in praise and, and to honor You, Lord. Lord, I pray that as we, as we look and we say goodbye to 2020 and we look and we say hello to 2021 that Lord that that you would help us Lord Lord that you would place that emphasis upon us Lord that our spirits need to be serviced and Lord we can't be serviced unless we go to a place where the service is performed Lord, just help those that need to get back into Your house this year. Lord, place that emphasis upon them. We'll give You praise, honor, and glory. Lord. Just be with us now. Take us as we, as we leave this place, Lord. Bring us back safely this evening as we open Your Word once again and continue to, to look into what uh, you're saying in and through the prophet Hosea. Lord, we love You. We thank You. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we do pray. Amen. Amen.